Hey everyone, today we'll be looking at some of the key mistakes low elo players make that lose them games and cause them to get stuck in elo hell. If you want to see simple, easy to fix mistakes that players are making at your rank, be sure to stick around. And even if you don't make these mistakes yourself, this will help you to identify when your opponents are making them, which will allow you to punish those mistakes more readily. Anyway, let's jump right in. To start, we want to take a look at this game here with an Anivia support and Bane ADC facing off against Jin and Lux. Obviously, Anivia is an off-meta support, but every mistake that she makes here will be generic and apply to every range support at the very least. Anyway, the lane starts, and yeah, what do you think? How are both supports doing so far here? Well, could you even see Lux? Hopefully you realize that the fact that we asked that question is a problem in and of itself. This is easily one of the top 5 most common mistakes we see over and over and over again from support players below Diamond, AFKing at level 1. This is a super extreme example of it, but it is incredibly common. Both supports here are egregiously guilty of it, as is expected. Neither of these players is taking any initiative on the push, just completely leaving their fate in the ADC's hands. If you're not aware, you should absolutely be up, pressuring, looking to slightly push the wave to help secure the level 2 advantage here. As a point of comparison, here's a random game that I picked from CoreJJ on a ranged support. He instantly autos the wave once, then is constantly moving forward, pressuring the lane, being a nuisance, and just being super active in general. Even though it doesn't look like he's getting any huge advantage here, this pressure is making his ADC's life way easier, and in the long run, will have big benefits for their lane. And we can see just a bit later, at the first time Anivia actually decides to play up and be involved in the lane, they find an amazing trade onto Jin, coming out evenish in HP despite the enemy lane blowing three sums. But as a fair warning, it's not as simple as just always play up and aggressively. You need to understand why and when you're playing this way. For example, just a few seconds later, emboldened by her new sense of confidence, Nivea steps up a second after Vayne tumbles backwards to avoid Lux's E and just takes a terrible 1v2 trade. So, of course you still need to play with your ADC and gauge their readiness, but you need to constantly be looking for chances to play up in the early lane phase, especially in low elo where other supports don't and you can punish that. Next up, a minute later, we see this situation here and we want to talk about why this whole series of events here is entirely Anivia's fault. Despite the fact that it's her ADC that ends up going down. So back at the start, they should absolutely recall right here after crashing this wave. They are way too low to safely stay, and even though they have some decent vision, when pushed up this far, a gank can still be deadly. But beyond that, it's just a great recall timing, so why not? It's not like they're going to dive the enemy lane here. And what we really want to communicate here is that 9 times out of 10, at the very least, if you recall here, your ADC will as well. There's no way Vayne is going to see you recall, see her HP, and decide, hey, it's a great time to be here all alone. So, while controlling your ADC is generally near impossible, this is one of those situations where you have a good shot at leading your ADC to the right choice. Instead, Anivia actively moves forward, baiting Vayne to stay, and everything after that is her fault. Alright, moving on to the next game, we join with this gold elo Seraphine, paired up with Illusion, up against a Bard and Senna. Once again, right away here in the lane phase at level 2, we have some very mistake-ridden play from our Seraphine. What do you think it is? What's she doing wrong? Take a few seconds to think. So this one is a bit more nuanced, but her positioning is just wrong. As the Seraphine, she wants to be harassing the enemy ADC and pressuring her, but she's staying on the same side of the lane as Bard, where if she walks up to hit Senna, she'll get blasted. So, she should try to move out into the left side of the lane away from the brushes. If Bard doesn't follow, as many low elo supports won't, she'll have free access to harass. If Bard does match, then Seraphine can know that she won't be allowed to harass freely without the enemy support interfering. At that point, she can go back to playing for brush control, or the brush here, and start to bully Bard with her range advantage instead. 
Once again, this is the type of proactive play and mindset that we hope you all pick up. Feeling this constant need to at least look for plays. This doesn't mean that you constantly try for dumb plays, just that you are constantly thinking, probing, etc., rather than just AFKing in the bush and letting the game go by. I also want to touch on this moment a couple of minutes later, where they are somewhat low on HP and crashing the wave. Remind you of last game? What we want to point out here, though, is that we're not as mad about them deciding to stay this time. They have more health, their vision will be up for longer, and the enemy jungler just died recently and is also in Ivern, who is a relatively low gank threat early game. Now, we also wouldn't be mad if they chose to take a good base, but this is a bit more debatable than the previous, obviously poor play. Anyway, moving on to the next game, we join with yet another gold elo player, this time on Leona, paired up with Vayne, facing off against a bit of a strange pairing in Nico and Janna. This mistake that we're about to see is so common that, right here at 135, I already knew with 99% certainty it was about to happen. If you've watched our videos enough, you might know what it is. Take a few seconds to think and see if you can predict the mistake yourself. Okay, let's play out a few seconds and see if we all know then. What do you think? Did you spot it now? If not, the huge mistake that Leona has made already is over pushing this uncontested wave. If we keep speeding up here, just look at how awful this situation is at the moment our bot lane dings level 2. Leona can't possibly do anything here without getting into tower range, so the advantage is blown. This is such an insanely, insanely common mistake that we continue to see players make that just destroys their chance of winning the lane at level 2, which is what our smurfs do in almost every single game that they play in this elo range. Again, you want to get a slight advantage on that wave, a couple of auto attacks, definitely not executing from half HP, so that when you hit level 2, they're in a spot where you can actually engage and do something about that advantage you've gained. Alright, jumping into our last clip for the day, we have this time a mid-platinum player, Rakan, with Tristana facing off against Aphelios Shen. The lane starts out pretty spicy with an intense all-in engagement here before 3 minutes and a 1 for 1 trade occurring. What would you do now if you were him? Take a couple of seconds to think. If your plan included basing in the near future, nice job. There's really no reason to not base somewhat soon here and we'll cover why that is in a second. First though, we'll definitely accept the more specific answer of sitting around for a bit, waiting to see and make sure that Shen isn't trying to stay and crash the wave, or that it doesn't crash on its own, then basing. It is super important to prevent that if you think it's possible. Now, as for why this is a great base timing, well, with the wave only barely slow pushing toward them, it's probably not going to reach tower before the next wave arrives, meaning that Triss can freeze for a little bit when she gets back. This means that Rakan won't lose hardly any minions while he's gone, and that Trist will be farming right near tower, relatively safe from harm while she's alone, which is awesome. Now, in this situation, it does end up being really close to the point where it's probably good that he stuck around. In other games and situations, it'll be more obvious that the wave won't crash, in which case you could recall immediately. But again, the second that he realized he had stopped the wave from crashing, he should immediately press B and get that free recall in while he has the chance. However, instead of either of those options, he literally just hangs out, once again AFKing in the lane essentially, and is now stuck here on low HP and without boots. And while this is super anecdotal, it's still a nice example. A couple of minutes later, Nunu comes by to gank, and Rakan just barely, barely misses his W onto Aphelios, blowing the kill. Now first, he should have just taken the guaranteed kill onto Shen who is flashless and tauntless, but beyond that, if he had boots, he could have also easily landed this onto Aphelios, who has no boots, by just running at him for half of a second before using W. So just an example of how a seemingly small mistake, like missing that face timing earlier, can of course have serious negative impact on your lane. And that's going to do it for this one. As a quick summary, some of the most blatant and common mistakes that we constantly see low elo supports making are, number one, over pushing the wave at level one. Number two, missing obvious free base timings, which often leads to your ADC missing them as well, which is generally disastrous. And number three, just generally not exerting enough pressure on the lane. 
whether that's by AFKing in a brush like the Anivia did, or not understanding how to position in a way that potentially gives them access to harassing and exerting their strength on the lane like in the Seraphine's case. Anyway, that's going to do it for today. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.